Welcome back and it's always good to uh, get a little bit of coaching uh, when you're feeling maybe down and out, maybe a little bit under under the weather uh, emotionally and that's why we've got Karen Deegan here. Welcome. Perfect. Thank you. And we were just saying a bit of Monday-itis here today, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Having a bit of a yawn. <laughs> Having a bit of a yawn this morning, but you know what, it's Monday, uh, we're all like that. Um, but what are some things, I mean before we, we talk about You've talked about with Andrea the words should and shouldn't. Yes, we have talked about that before, but you know, both of those words have aliases. So we don't always recognise that we're using them. And you know, should, for instance, might have an alias of I must or I have to. But I wanted to really talk about the aliases of that evil word shouldn't today, because that, they are harder to pick up. They disguise themselves quite well. Before I tell you one of the aliases, let me tell you a wee story about a client that I had this week who during our session said at least three times I allowed myself like for instance I allowed myself to relax when I was on holiday or I allowed myself to buy that and I said to her did you realize that you know you've said I allowed myself now knowing her as I do I know there's actually not very many things that she allows herself she seems to have quite strict rules in her head so if there's not many things that she is allowed there must be a very long list of things that she's not allowed according to her rule book, and those are the who shouldn'ts. And if she was looking for thoughts like, oh, I shouldn't, she wouldn't find them. Yeah, and I mean, that's interesting as well. It's the shoulda, woulda, coulda <laughs> kind of approach, isn't it? It's like, um, but you don't know that, you know, what do you, what do you think that is allowing something to do? Like, you should just do it, or should we be allowing ourselves to do certain things, or? Well, that's interesting because I, I write it as a chapter about should and shouldn't in my book. And I always say, if it's a should, if I, like I'm quite trained now not to think, not to have shoulds, but if I notice one, I think to myself, no, it's a should free day today. Yeah. And so I won't do it if it's a should. And, and so to, for me, every day is a should free day. So when it comes to shouldn'ts, like there are wise ones, like, you know, you shouldn't touch a hot oven or you shouldn't eat chocolate for breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> much although, as... <laughs> although I'd love to. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Seriously, would love to. So those sort of shoulds or shouldn'ts are helpful, but many of us, without even knowing, have a lot of really limiting shoulds and shouldn'ts, which limit our lives. And the problem is, Chelsea, a lot of them we don't even realise because they're in the subconscious mind. Hmm. And I mean, that's my next question. Are we consciously aware of this rule? No, we're not even aware that we have rules. You know, I talk about a rule book in our head, which and it is subconscious, because you know that the conscious mind is somewhere between 1% to maximum 5% of your thinking. So the subconscious mind is absolutely massive. And you know, we pick up these rules about how we should and shouldn't be as often as children. Or, and like for instance, this lady, her, her mother worked very, very, very hard and never really took a moment to herself. So guess what? She is like as an adult, never takes a moment for herself because she's created this rule from watching her parents about this is the way things are done. But we don't walk around all day thinking, oh, this is my rule. No, it's quite subconscious. Yeah, and I mean, is that, uh, is this, you know, is it about taking a moment to, to find some time for yourself? Most of my clients, don't do that. You know, I see sort of certain traits, and one of the things I see is people do work too hard, and they need to find ways of slowing down and doing less, but they can't because they've got these rules. So I've got a wee tip for everyone today. Do we have time for a tip, Chelsea? Yes. Okay, so the tip is this. Think of a behaviour or a situation that if you changed it, it would actually change your life. Think of it, and then think to yourself, say to yourself, I'm allowed to, to do that, or I'm allowed to have that, or I'm allowed to be that. And then just let that, give yourself permission, let that sit for a minute and think, hmm, do I feel comfortable? I'm allowed to sleep until 11 o'clock on a Sunday. Mm. I'm allowed to leave my bed unmade. Uh, think of something that you don't normally let yourself do. When you say, I'm allowed that, see whether it feels comfortable or not, because if it doesn't, you may have limiting beliefs that stop you doing that. And of course, that's what I help people to change. Yeah. I mean, what's something that you allow yourself to do? I allow myself a couple of pieces of chocolate a day, sometimes more, but I wouldn't allow myself for every, you know, for every meal. I'd love to, but I'd be big as a house. Um, I do allow myself to relax. I'm really good at that. A lot of people don't. Hmm. 
and uh, and there's a lot of ways like I guess it's different with uh, every person as well it might be reading a book or it might be watching the telly or it might be going for a walk is it just simple things like that that we can incorporate in our daily lives yes but if you've got um, a rule that you can sit and relax when you've done all the work I know I see that in people all the time great but see what if you haven't done all the work and so some people don't relax and they, they never really, their, their stress levels are so high and they're not enjoying life. Yeah, because yeah. I mean sometimes work, it could, it could be infinite, infinite, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, and so what are the rules about when you are allowed to relax? Yeah, you, you probably don't even realise them until we get into a conversation and we start looking in your subconscious mind, you may not even realise what your rules are. Yeah, well, could people maybe think about what rules they do and don't have, or? They could try, mm. yeah. As I said, think of a behaviour or a situation that could, here's, um, I'm allowed to work four days a week from now on. These are biggie. Would you be allowed? What do your rules say? Oh no, that would be lazy, or no, that, you know, what does it say about you if you worked four days a week? Some people will, every single person we ask will come up with a different thing as to what that means. We've all got these things that limit us from really enjoying our lives. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Well, isn't that a nice note to leave on? Uh, we have things that limit ourselves for it to enjoy our lives to the fullest. Yes. Yeah, so beautiful. Take that tip away for the week. And thank you, Karen, for always uh, coming in and, and uplifting us <laughs> and giving us some, some, some fantastic uh, information and, and tips. You're welcome. Beautiful. Anyway.